All right, this video is going to go over putting in some access control lists uh, that will allow our DNS traffic to work. So um, if you go way back to the podcast from the ACL and that lab, this is what it looked like at the end of my podcast. Um, I had an inbound from the internet list. I was letting anything in from the out TCP 80 and 443 in from any source going to the NAT of my server. So 99.99.99.5 is the NAT I'm using for my server in VLAN 3. I'm letting any established TCP traffic back in. So that's going to let, uh, if I send traffic out to the internet, that's going to let the established traffic back in. And then uh, line 40 here is letting UDP, any source IP address coming from port 53. So anything coming from the, a DNS server. Uh, port is being let back in and then I added ICMP um, If we look at my outbound from VLAN 3 list, we have the host uh, range defined um, with the uh, Network address wildcard bass combination um, And we're letting it out to any over 80 and 443 for web traffic We're also letting return TCP tra traffic back out So that's when people from the outside come into my web server. This will let that return traffic back out we have a line letting um, DNS traffic out from this from this network, uh, and then we have uh, permit ICMP any any. So that's that's what we ended up with at the end of, of my video from the NAT and ACL lab. Uh, you were also supposed to create an outbound from VLAN two list that would pretty much mirror this outbound from VLAN three list uh, to let traffic out from VLAN two, with the difference being you would have a different range of networks. So here, here's my packet tracer file. I have my static NAT for my server. I have a very basic um, outbound NAT PAT config uh, that's just using the interface IP address for that. And I have my three access control lists. If we look back up in the config, those access control lists are not applied to the interface yet. So even though they exist in my router config, they're not activated. So first thing I like to do is do a little bit of testing to make sure that my stuff is working as expected before I start putting before I start putting um, access control list on. So from my internal client, I should be able to get to my internal domain name. I should be able to get to cnt.lab, and um, then I should be also be able to get from the outside. I should be able to get into my public domain name. So um, there's another video that you probably can find on the on the YouTube channel that, that shows how I set this DNS up to work in a in a in a realistic manner. I'm not gonna go through that again in detail, but this PC is using 10.1.1.130 for DNS, so that's this server. So this PC is going to ask this server questions. This server is the, the DNS server for the rlwell.lab domain and the student99.lab domain. Uh, but this is a server for the cnt.lab domain. So if we look at the network flow for the traffic, PC0 is going to ask this server. This server is going to ask the RichNet server. And then the answer will come back to this server. And then that will go back to PC0. So we need to put access control list in to let this outbound um, outbound DNS to let all the DNS we need to work work so uh, one thing I want to point out now before I forget if you go to the DNS server tab your DNS servers are caching records so if you put a a rule in that is not right there's a chance it might still work because of cached DNS records and that is a realistic uh, situation you might run into in the real world where um, the records are cached, you make some changes, it still works when you test, but then after that cache expires, everything's broken. So the first thing we're going to do is put our access control lists onto our interfaces. So my outside interface was 00, zero fast Ethernet 00. zero. So we'll apply, we'll apply, um, what's it called? Inbound from internet. Internet, internet, access IP access group inbound from internet 
in. So we're going to filter the traffic that's coming into that interface. Um, and then we're going to apply uh, our other two lists to our sub interfaces. So we have FA01.2 for VLAN 2 and 1.3 for VLAN 3. So that's going to be our VLAN 2 list and inbound from VLAN 2. And that is not called inbound, it's called outbound. So this, this is something you should know from uh, before. Uh, outbound is referring to the direction our traffic is going out of our network. But for our filtering, when we add it to the to the interface, we want to filter whether the traffic is coming into the interface or going out of the interface. So if we look at our network, traffic going from this PC is going in this interface, the sub interface, but it's going out of my network. So so in and out of your in and out on the interface is relative to the interface and not your network architecture. So in this case, like I said, I'm going to do in change this to VLAN three. In. So now my access control lists are applied to my interfaces. So now I want to see what works. Remember I cleared the DNS cache on, on my uh, on my DNS server. So we're going to try rlwell.lab. Up here we're going to try cnt.lab and my, my guess is based on the list we had I don't think anything's gonna work wait cnt.lab not cnt.lab student 99.lab is what we're trying from the outside and that's probably not gonna work this is uh, still waiting to time out so if we look at our access control list this PC is in VLAN 2, we are not letting DNS, yeah, we're letting, yeah, we are letting DNS traffic out of VLAN 2. So the traffic should make it over to this server, right? And let's look at what we're doing for VLAN 3. We're letting DNS traffic out of VLAN 3, so we should be letting the traffic all the way out all the way out so the outbound traffic should work let's try the outbound so rll.lab didn't work so let's see if cnt.lab works we had dns working before so dns should work it seems like it takes a while sometimes and i don't like that it still said hostname unresolved so i like to open a clean browser window and try that. So let's let's let this run. We can check. We can. Uh, DNS was working before outbound, so that should still work. Even though I said it wasn't going to work, I don't know why DNS. The first time I try it takes takes a while for it to work. So we'll just uh, let that go. We'll come back up here. Student99.lab didn't work. So in order to let Student99.lab work, we need to let DNS request in from the outside to our to our uh, NAT address. So we'll go ahead and, and add that list. So, so we want to edit our list inbound from internet. So we're going to have to edit two lists. We're going to want to permit UDP any host 99.99.99.5 eq53 so if we add that that's going to let the dns traffic in from the network to the server but our vlan 3 list is not going to let the return traffic back out from the server so we need to edit our, our vlan 3 list outbound from vlan 3 we need to let that list edit that list to let the DNS server responses back out. So the server responses was a rule that looked like this: permit UDP any EQ domain. So from any source going from the DNS port, 
we want to let that out. So we're not going to do any source because we know very specifically the IP address of our DNS server. So we're going to do permit UDP host 10.1.1.130 EQ 53 any. Um, so that's going to let any traffic out that's coming back out from our DNS server port. So that should fix the student99.lab thing. My cnt.lab still didn't work, which I thought that should work. So let's try student99.lab again. So there we go. So now that I added those rules, the student99.lab is working. So PC0 asks this server for DNS, this server asks server1 for DNS, and now my replies allow back out. So over here, okay, so, so now cnt.lab was working. Um, I do not think those rules we added, let me think about that for a minute, yeah, so actually that rule we added did fix that. This rule let my DNS reply back out from my server. We did not have a DNS server on VLAN 3 before, so when we tried the first time, I was asking the DNS server question, the VLAN 3 list was dropping that server reply, so that, that fixed that. So. So now we can get to cnt.lab, see if we can get to rlwell.labs. Now we can get to rlwell.lab, and from the outside, we can get to student99.lab. So those, those two lines I added uh, on top of what we had fixed that. So this line added to the inbound from internet list, let the DNS traffic in. And this other line added to the VLAN 3 list, let the DNS traffic back out. So that's pretty much what we needed to do. Uh, if you had the existing existing lines in place in the access control list, that's what you needed to add to, to let DNS work.